you can memorize scripture better if you put it to music, right? Do you remember being in school and your teachers, I, I remember learning the 50 states with a song way back when I was young. I still could say it. it they just so burned it in, Alabama, Alaska, Arizona. But by having the, the melody to it, it causes you to remember it better. So I really think that a lot of the reason people come out with these songs is because it comes as a result of their personal time with God. And as they're meditating on the word and just memorizing scripture, they put it to, to a tune and then they remember the tune and then that, then that verse just keeps rolling over in your spirit. It's very powerful, isn't it? Say yes, please. Let me know you're here. It's very powerful. And it could also be powerful if you were listening to Led Zeppelin back in the day like I was, because then it's the wrong thing that's rolling around in your spirit. And it's, and it's birthed in witchcraft, and it's birthed in the wrong spirit. And a lot of people have committed suicide because they were listening to the wrong thing in their brain over and over and over. And you know, the longer you keep listening to a lie, the more it sounds like the truth. So you really need to offset that lie with the truth of the word of God. And the reason I mention that is because I first learned this verse through a song. I don't even think, I, I was a young Christian, I don't even know that if, I knew it was a verse. I just heard them singing, and I didn't know if it was just a lyric or if it was a verse. And the way I heard it was the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will set you free from the law of sin and death. And I thought I stopped at the law of the spirit. The more I've studied this, the more I've come to realize I put the comma in the wrong place. It's the law of the spirit of life in Christ. See, that's one big law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ. That's what sets you free from the law of sin and death. And this word law is no joke, right? Like the law of gravity. I could step off this step and say, I curse you, law of gravity. But without a miracle, it's going to pull me down, isn't it? Because it doesn't care whether I believe it's true or not. It's a law. But then there's another law called lift that if I was going fast enough, the law of gravity takes second place to the law of lift. And that's why you can fly in a plane. <laughs> so the law of death is what we inherited when we were born, right? You know this. This is pretty basic Christianity 101. We're all born with original sin. And unless we get saved, we're going to die in that sin. And there's a punishment for that. The wages of sin is death. But the good news is that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free from the law of sin and death. And they're at odds with each other. And in our flesh, we're going to gravitate towards, what, death and sin. But by the Spirit of God living inside of us, we gravitate towards life. So really, if I had to summarize what I'm going to talk about today and the different verses I'm going to use, that would be the theme, is that we're continually contesting and contending between which one is going to win in our life. Because just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you never sin. You have to yield yourself to the Lord's rulership over your life, don't you? Say yes, church. <laughs> Not going to be a condemning message. It's actually really good news. It's, it's that there is an answer. You know how Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I end up doing. Who's going to deliver me from this mess? And the answer was Jesus. And Jesus resurrecting allowed Holy Spirit to be released from heaven. 50 days later on the day of Pentecost, and now all of us have this supernatural power residing in us. If we don't yield to it, it doesn't just automatically take over. So we have to yield to the Spirit's power in us and the truth of the Word, and we have to take second place to God's rulership. That's why he's the king of kings. All of us are priests and kings, but he's our king. He has final say. And that's really good news because the world doesn't know that. They think they have to do it their own way. And I like the voice version, which I guess you're seeing now. That's awesome. Thank you, Booth. Another group of people that bail me out on a regular basis. <laughs> Thank you, Booth. People. <laughs> My peeps in the booth. <laughs> he says, when you live in the anointed one, Jesus. Isn't that a great phrase? Are you living in the anointed one, Jesus? Just because you're saved doesn't mean you're living in it. Because if you, I remember being in a Bible study with a men's group from work, and the guy said before the Holy Spirit became real to him, he used to go to work in the morning, 
and say, okay, he would read the scripture in his car, and then when he got out of his car, he'd say, okay, God, goodbye, I'll see you at 5 o'clock when I leave work. <laughs> see, I got the revelation that God wanted to be with him even at the job, right? But living in the anointed one means he goes wherever we go, and that we know he's a very present help no matter what we're doing. And, and it's just really, frankly, pride often that can stop that from happening. Because uh, in the American culture, at least, we think having to ask for help is a sign of weakness. And especially men, I think, are taught that. I certainly was taught that. As a football player, I was drilled to know the difference between an injury and pain. <laughs> All the football players are getting triggered right now. <laughs> And clearly, it was only pain. You were never really injured, the coach would say. It's just pain, and you have to learn how to deal with pain. If you're going to be a man, you learn how to deal with pain. If it was really an injury, okay, maybe we'll give you a day off. <laughs> That's a lie, brother. That's a lie. But look, you know, like you buy into that, and you think somehow being a man means not having to ask for help. That's a blatant lie. We're supposed to be asking God for help all the time. Not only is that not a sign of weakness, that is a sign of the greatest strength because it means you're living in the anointed one. Nothing he doesn't care about. Everything that's important to you is important to him. There's nothing you can go to him with where he'd say, oh, please, stop bothering me. He never slumbers or sleeps. Isn't that amazing? Oh, so when you live in the anointed one, Jesus, a new law takes effect. You're not bound by the one you were born into, death. A new law takes effect. The law of the spirit of life breathes into you and liberates you from the law of sin and death. And what does breathing into you remind you of? Genesis, right? God made man out of dirt, and he breathed into that dirt and life, animated life. He came alive because of that. And someday in this world, our breath is going to leave us, which means we're going to die, but we're going to be resurrected again. We're going to rule and reign with Christ in a resurrected body with no pain and no disease and no decline. So we have this mission while we're here to make the most of what we have while we're here. And this is our turn. You know, that's what you could say. We, we sat here Friday night and we watched uh, the... Can't remember it now. Sight and Sound. Sorry, I couldn't remember the name of the place. They did a great production of a movie. How many came? It was a blessing, right? Make some noise if you liked it. Don't let the mass stop you from making noise. <laughs> but it went all the way back to the 1800s and 1900s. That was their turn. See, they're gone now. 50 years from now, I'm probably going to be gone. I hope not, but you know, at some point, unless Jesus returns, I'm not depressed by that. I'm going to make the most of the turn that I have right now. And we can all say that. Isn't this awesome? It's the great equalizer. It's not based on your IQ or your family background. You're a Christian. And the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. And you can do great exploits for the kingdom of God. And God isn't measuring us one against the other, is he? Often we think that he is. He's not. You can think of the talents, right? The parable of the talents. One got two, one got one, one got five. Anybody remember this? The one that got five, yeah, there's two different parables. I'm thinking of the one that got five made 10, the one that got two made four, and the one that had one talent did what? Well, he didn't make much of his chance, did he? He didn't realize it was his turn. He said, I knew that you were a harsh man, so I hid it so that I wouldn't lose it. And he was rebuked for that, wasn't he? So we can't stand before the Lord when we see him and say, well, I was afraid I'd mess it up, so I didn't try. I'm going to leverage the opportunity that you give me. I might not be very good at it, but it's not going to be because I'm not trying. I'm going to live in the anointed. And I'm going to ask you, Lord, to breathe into me. When you live in the anointed one, a new law takes effect, and it's the spirit of life that breathes into you and liberates you from the law of sin and death. And when that's very active in your life, you're contagious with that life. And the people you're talking to and the people you come in contact with, something like what happened this morning, a word of knowledge about knees. David hasn't had pain in his knees, and all of a sudden he got pain in his knees, and you're like, well, where's that in the Bible? Look, you know, God speaks to us because he loves us. He's our children. And that's called a word of knowledge. So God can do that in, a, in an infinite amount of ways that he could show us. 
that he's speaking to us. And I know most of you that have been a Christian any length of time know that there's many stories you could tell when you knew it was the Lord, because it had to be the Lord, right? So we don't have to go there. I trust David. You all should trust him too. If he says he feels the Lord prompt him in a certain direction, receive the healing of your knees. I mean, if they were going to change my name, I would like it to be Neil. Because <laughs> then you're always thinking about kneeling down and praying, right? Like, that'd be a good new name to have, wouldn't it? Because that's what God wants. He wants us living in the anointed one. And look, praying doesn't mean that you have to, you know, set yourself aside. It's good to do that, but you could be praying in any situation that you're in. You could be talking to God and inviting him into your situation. That's part of what living in him means. 